Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. Thank you for still watching Cikgu Zana's lesson video. Today's lesson is on how to construct histogram, which is a continuation from the previous lesson video. The steps to be taken are First step, find the class boundaries. These values will be displayed on the x-axis. Secondly, determine the class size. From the class size, we can identify whether the histogram is of equal class size or otherwise. Since the histograms are to be drawn on a graph paper, a suitable scale must be chosen so that your histogram fits the graph paper and also the histogram will not be too small. And lastly, label both the X and Y axis. Let's look at the first example. We need to draw a histogram to represent the above information, which is the scores obtained by 30 students in a quiz. A frequency distribution table that shows the class interval, class boundary, class size and frequency is constructed. The first step is to find the class boundary. The class boundary is the midpoint between the upper and lower limits of adjacent classes. For example, for the first class interval, the lower boundary is the midpoint of 0 and 1, which is 0 0.5, and the upper boundary is the midpoint of 2 and 3, which is 2.5. For the second class interval, the lower boundary is the midpoint of 2 and 3, which is 2.5, and the upper boundary is the midpoint of 4 and 5, which is 4.5. So we have 2.5 to 4.5. The same goes for the rest of the class intervals. To determine the class size, this is done by subtracting the lower boundary from the upper boundary. So we have... Notice that... All the classes are of the same size. Next step is to choose a suitable scale for the histogram. In this example, a scale of 2 cm to 2 units for the x axis since all the classes is of size 2. And 2 cm is 2 unit for the y axis since the largest value of f is 12. For the first class interval, a bar is drawn from 0.5 to 2.5 on the x axis and with a height of 2 on the y axis. The second bar, it is drawn from 2.5 to 4.5 on the x axis and with a height of 4. Similarly for the rise of the class intervals. Don't forget, label the y-axis as frequency and the x-axis as cost. So we have a histogram with equal class intervals. Next, try to construct a histogram to illustrate the data that shows the parking duration in minutes for 110 cars. Remember the steps to be taken. Find the class boundary followed by the class size. Since the class interval is written in this form, 
then it is sufficient to state the lower boundary of the class intervals as the class boundaries. For the class size, the lower boundary is subtracted from the upper boundary and we have Notice that the last class interval is of a different size. So how do we go about to draw the histogram? Recording the properties of histogram, the area of bars represent frequency of the class interval. So for unequal class size, the height of the bars must be adjusted and we can use the following methods which are using the per height method which is the standard class size divided by its class size times frequency or the frequency density method which is frequency divided by its class size. So for this example, since there is only one class which is of a different size, then we use the adjusting the height of the bar method. That is, the standard class size divided by its class size times the frequency. So we add an extra column to show the bar height. And for the last class interval, the height is adjusted as 15 divided by 30 multiplied by 20 which is 10 Next Choose a suitable skill Since the standard class size is 15 the skill for the x-axis is 2cm to 15 minutes and since the largest value of F is 32, thus the skill to be used is 2CM to 5 units. Next, draw all the bars for all the class intervals. For the last class interval, the height of the bar is 10, since area of the bar that represents the frequency is 20. You can check the frequency of the last class interval by multiplying 10 times 2, which gives you 20. Don't forget again, make sure your y-axis is labeled as frequency and also the x-axis, the measurement time in minutes. Okay, let's try to draw a histogram to illustrate the speeds of 100 vehicles that pass through a checkpoint. Remember the steps to be taken. Look at how the class intervals are written. So for this example, it is sufficient to state the upper boundaries as the boundaries for all the class intervals. To calculate the class size, the lower boundary is subtracted from the upper boundary and we have Notice that there are three class intervals which do not have the same class size. The first class interval, the fourth class and the last class. Since there are three class intervals which are of different sizes, Hence, it is advisable to use the frequency density method, which is frequency divided by its class size. So we add another column to show the values of the frequency density. Next step, choose the suitable skill to plot the histogram. Since the standard class size is 5, Thus, the skill to be used for the x-axis is 2cm is to 5 km per hour. Since the largest value of the frequency density is 3.4, thus the skill to be used is 2cm is 
20.5 unit. For the first class interval 30 to 40 km per hour, a bar is drawn which goes from 30 to 40 on the x-axis and 2 on the y-axis. For the second class interval, a bar is drawn from 40 to 45 on the x-axis and up to 2.4 on the y-axis. Similarly for the remaining class intervals. Take note, the y-axis is labeled as frequency density and the x-axis as speed in kilometer per hour. So this is how our histogram looks like. In conclusion, the height of the bars of the histogram depends on the size of the class intervals, since the area of the bars represent the frequency of the histogram. Okay, that is all for today. I hope that this lesson video has helped you to understand how to construct histograms accurately. So don't forget to press the like button, press subscribe and the notification bell. Thank you.